tired of choosing between Mac OS and Windows? How about running both on the same PC or laptop? Well, in this video, I'll show you one of the better ways to dual boot Windows and Mac OS. So let's get to it. This dual boot method does tend to work best if you already have a working Windows OS installed on your PC. And for this tutorial, we'll use a PC that already has Windows 11 installed on it. You can share the same hard drive as your current Windows OS. Two quick things before starting. First, be sure to back up any important data on the PC you'll be dual booting, or better yet, a full system image backup just in case something goes sideways during this process. If you're unsure on how to backup your current system, take a look at some of our videos on how to do so. I'll link one in the description. And secondly, you'll need a spare USB flash drive with eight gigabytes or more storage. Let me also note here that I'll put links to all the tools used in the video description for you. Next, we'll ensure that your computer has the latest version of Python installed. To do that, we'll head on over to Python's official website or the Microsoft Store and download the latest installer. This tool helps some of the other tools we'll use run effectively. After Python install successfully, we'll want to go grab a tool called Opcore Simplify. This tool helps us create some of the Mac OS boot files we'll need. Visit the GitHub site, click code, and then download zip. Now extract the files. Double click the Opcore Simplify batch file. Click run to start the file. Here it will ask you to skip updating type N and allow it to update once. If you're prompted to skip the updates again, this time click Y to skip. Next, let's select option one to select a hardware report and hit enter. Now let's export that hardware report by typing E and hitting enter. This report helps show us the latest version of Mac OS your PC supports. Hit enter to continue. Here we can select the version of Mac OS we want to install. I'd suggest going with Sequoia, so we'll type 24 and hit enter. Now we want to build the EFI boot file for our Mac OS. To do this, type 6 and hit enter. OpenCore downloads all the needed files to create our EFI folder we'll need soon. Enter the ID number of the default codec in green it suggests and hit enter. When you get your EFI folder pop-up, you can close, open, simplify. Let's make a copy of this folder to your desktop for later. Next, there's two tools we'll need to grab, USB toolbox and the kext file. This tool will help us to match up your USB port hardware with the Mac OS. We'll visit the GitHub site for each. First, for the USB toolbox, click under the latest release and select the windows.exe file to download. Next, for the toolbox kext file, click under the latest release and select the USB toolbox release zip file. Once both of these have been downloaded, let's go run that windows.exe file we downloaded. When it launches, type D and hit enter to start our USB port scan. Next, take your USB flash drive and plug it into each one of your USB ports. Leave it plugged in for about five seconds before moving it to the next USB port. This helps the software map up the USB ports for your new Mac OS. Once you've been through all of the USB ports, type B, to go back to the menu. Then type S to view the detected USB ports. As long as all of the ports are showing green and no red, you should be fine to move on. Press K and hit enter. This will save a USB kex file in the downloads folder. 
Let's go copy it and place it in the Kex folder within the EFI folder. Next, let's extract the USB toolbox files. Right click and select Extract All. Copy the USB toolbox.kex file to the same kex folder as before. Now, let's go grab another tool to help us build the Mac OS installer. Visit the GitHub for OC Auxiliary Tools, click the release, and select the OCAT-Win64 zip file. Go extract these files and we'll want to launch the OC Auxiliary Tools application. If you get a smart screen pop-up, click more info and run anyway. Here, we want to open the config point plist file from our EFI folder. Click on the kernel section. Click the plus sign and add the two kex files we created. utbmap.kext and usbtoolbox.kext. Once added, save the config file and close this out. All right, now let's get that flash drive again and plug it in. It's time to finish up the installer. We'll grab the Rufus tool to help us do this. Download Rufus and then launch the application. Set the boot selection to non-bootable, the partition scheme to GPT, and file system to FAT32. Click Start and let it format the USB. Close it out when done. Next, we'll copy our EFE folder and paste it in our USB drive. Now it's time to grab our macOS image file. To do this, we'll use a GitHub OpenCore script to download the image. Visit the GitHub site, click Release, and then select the OpenCore release zip file. Next, extract the OpenCore zip file. Then navigate to the Mac recovery folder inside Utilities. Next, in the file path bar, type CMD and hit enter to open a command prompt within that directory. Now we need to go snag the command script to download the Mac OS image file we want to install. Visit this GitHub site and we'll find the command for the Sequoia release. Earlier, if you decided to go with a different release, be sure to select that version command here. I'll copy that command and paste it into the command prompt. Hit enter and it should begin downloading our Mac OS. Quick note, if you get a Python error here, you may need to install it from the Microsoft Store. Once done, a new folder com.apple.recovery.boot has been created. Copy this new folder and paste it in your USB drive. And finally, our USB installer is set up. All right, now we have to make room on your Windows hard drive for the new Mac OS. To do that, let's open Disk Management by right clicking on your Start menu or by searching Disk Management. 
right click your main Windows drive and select shrink volume. I'd suggest 100 gigabytes or more and then click shrink. Once done, we'll have a new unallocated space to set up. Right click and select new simple volume. Click next and be sure to format the new volume as XFAT. Label the new volume as desired. We'll name it Mac OS. Click finish and you've made space for your Mac OS. Now let's boot into our USB drive. Restart your PC and enter your boot menu at startup. For most PCs, you'll get your boot menu by hitting the F2, F10, or F12 key at startup. Research your PC brand if you're having issues getting into your boot menu. Another quick note, be sure to disable secure boot in BIOS. You may also wish to set up your boot menu order to start from a USB device first rather than your internal drive. Once booted, select the Mac OS installer and press enter. Once the full installer loads, let's click on Disk Utility and continue. Here, select that Mac OS partition we created. Click Erase and change the format to APFS. Click Erase. Once done, close the utility. Click on Reinstall Mac OS and click Continue. Agree to the terms and conditions. Select the drive partition we created and click Continue. The install will begin. Each PC will take different time spans to install. Be patient. Once the Mac OS is installed, you can walk through the standard setup until it loads the desktop. And after all that work and wait, Mac OS should be successfully installed on your PC. Now let's knock out a few final touches to set up the dual boot action. We'll need to copy the contents of the EFI folder from the USB to our Mac OS drive. To do this, we need to grab OC Auxiliary Tools for Mac. Visit the GitHub site, click on Releases, and select the OCAT underscore Mac.dmg file. Run this tool. If you get a security pop-up, we'll want to go allow this to open in your settings. Go to System Settings, then Privacy and Security. Then scroll down till you see Open Anyway. Click Open Anyway. Enter the password you set up and hit OK. Now we want to mount the ESP partition for your Mac drive. To do this, click Edit, then Mount ESP. Click Mount and Open Config. Enter your password and hit OK. Locate your USB installer drive and copy the OC and boot folders.
Now, locate your internal Mac OS drive. It may be labeled differently than system here. Paste them into the EFI folder on your internal Mac OS drive. Merge the files if asked. Okay, you can unplug your USB drive now. Let's make one last tweak to ensure our dual boot lays nice. For this step, go ahead and boot back into your Windows partition. We need to change the default bootloader, so we get the option to select which OS we want to boot to. To do this, open an admin command prompt by typing CMD in the search menu, then clicking Run as administrator. Now we'll type the following command and hit Enter. Restart your PC. And that's it. Dual booting Mac OS and Windows 11 on your PC. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more tech tips and tricks. It really is the best way you can support the channel. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody.